Yeah, it's the water box. Well, I really appreciate you all being here. Welcome, welcome. Yes. Best day of the week? Yes, it is. This will be a good episode, too. Yes. So, very excited. I'm very excited. happy to revisit this, yes. this aquarium. One of my favorites, for sure. Uh, we are giving away two water box shirts today, so the... Um, the currency. currency to win is be active in the comments, share, like, subscribe, all that stuff, but definitely be active, ask questions, we'll be taking them throughout the show. Yes, absolutely, please do that. We are here live specifically for that reason, so yep. that we can engage with you guys, so put your questions in there, whether it's about the topic today, whether it's about your journey, the bio water box, or... Questions uh, about it, yeah, anything. Really. Anything. Yep, we cover it all, so um, drop those and we'll be grabbing them as we can, and we'll definitely do a Q&A session a little bit later, too. Yeah, I do want to mention real quick before we get started, if you didn't watch last week, we released new mesh lids for yes. the cube and all-in-one. Yep. Um, and we also released our new magnetic glass cleaner. So if you didn't see that, uh, definitely make it, a, make it a point to jump back to last week's live stream and check that out. Yep, watch last week and all those. Also on the YouTube channel, we've got overview videos, and then I believe dropping very soon will be instructional videos yep. on the lid and the magnets. Um, so it'll give you a little bit more in-depth look at those and also proper mm -hmm. usage and building and all that stuff. Yeah. So. And I will tell you guys that they are hot. They are flying out the door. People yep. um, were very excited to get the lids and as well as the magnets too. So uh, definitely check that out. Check it out if you missed it. And that's yep. why you don't want to miss an episode because we're always yeah. doing new stuff. Got cool fun things going on with the build. So Every week. Um, it'll be a good one for that. And um, yeah. Cool. So we're adding... <laughs> <laughs> I thought you, you do your share thingy. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. If you guys haven't already, destroy the like button. Whoa. It helps us out tremendously. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. Hit that notification bell. If you're on Facebook, share the stream to your friends. Yeah. Because um, we are live. Again, we used to do be live on Facebook and YouTube. We took a little hiatus from Facebook. But we're back on we're Facebook. Back. Uh, so we appreciate you have that, that magical power of sharing it. Yes. So, Take advantage, share it so all your friends can see all the fun yeah. stuff we're share doing. It, and share it to your stream, share it to the little uh, other, maybe you're in some reefing groups or something like that. Yeah. Because um, we're here to help you guys be better hobbyists. So Spread the word, spread yeah. the love. Yeah. Awesome. So um, if you guys follow along, we did a fully aquaculture build with ORA. Uh, it started about 11 months ago. Get out of here. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, <laughs> I was not expecting that at all, actually. So today we're actually going to um, show you some upgrades we did to it and add some fish and corals. Yeah. If you guys don't, again, you guys really should take a look back at that that, mm -hmm. that video or that series. It's really, really right. great. Right. They should be linked in the description, I believe. Did we link them? We will. Okay. They will be, or you can search on YouTube. So we have a whole series that, and this aquarium started in an all-in-one peninsula. Yeah. At 11 months ago, and we wanted to do a fully aquacultured system, show what's really possible, what's environmentally friendly, you know, and that we're really big on, for, you know, preserving the reefs and oceans and stuff. Yeah. And ORA is a great partner for that. So it started with an all-in-one peninsula 11 months ago, almost to the day that we did the first like setup mm -hmm. and beginning of it. And um, about six months ago, we actually moved it over to the sump version of the peninsula. So it's the Marine the 48 X 4820 20. Peninsula. Um, we moved it over six months ago. Wow. I know, time flies. And it's looking <clears throat> freaking amazing too. Everything's growing in really mm -hmm. nicely. And again, I want you guys to remember, this is a fully aquaculture tank. Every single animal in this, yep. this aquarium is aquacultured. Yes. So. Um, and then also, search warning, we'll link it in later, is um, we have a video that is a, um, a tour of ORA. Yes. Behind the scenes stuff that you're not usually ever going to be able to see. It's an amazing video. Shows their little baby clowns and big vats of fish, um, sharks that they're breeding. Like, that was a really All that cool, kind of cool stuff. Really so cool if you there. haven't seen into it, definitely go check it out. Um, it's probably one of my video, favorite videos we've put together, and it's really neat to see because you don't ever get to go visit one of those facilities. It's not yeah. open to the public. You know, right. It shows you really how all these the system works and stuff like they that. They get asked for neat. tours. People want to tour their facilities all the time. Yeah. But it's, it's Not only is it on a... Uh, is it protected? You know, they have like security up front yes. and everything. Uh, but You're they also have what in. they call like, uh, what is it, biological security or biosecurity? Biosecurity, yeah, yeah support so they, or something like that. Yeah, they so there. they can't just let anybody in there. We were lucky enough to get in there and we did a really nice thing. It's about a 25 minute video yep. on their whole facility. Definitely check it out. Facility. Um, so we want to do, now that it's been up and running for a little bit, we did a few upgrades to the equipment mm -hmm. um, in this past week. 
So first one is, first uh, set it up and we moved it over into the um, Sump Peninsula, um, is we had a newer 5 on it for flow. Yep. And went ahead and upgraded it to an MP40. Um, reasoning being is just that it's going to connect to the Mobius app. It also, um, with more SPS <coughs> going in, the ones that we, <coughs> losing my voice, the <laughs> ones that are in there are growing, you know, and then with that peninsula shape, having that more varied flow patterns and adjustability was really kind of key, I think. Yeah. So it felt it was time as everything's been growing to upgrade the flow, we put an MP40 onto it. Yeah, and, you'll, and you guys will find a lot too, as your tank matures, you'll need to, you'll need to adjust your flow. You might mm -hmm. have one power head, even if you don't add another power head, yeah. you might find yourself moving them based on you know wh where the corals are growing in, where you're getting dead spots in the aquarium Absolutely. and stuff. So. And yeah, we could, have had, we could have easily added a second Nero 5 to gain more flow and stuff in there, but decided to go ahead and go with the um, Ecotech version for the MP40. Yep. And um, it is true because as one of my bird's nests has grown in on there, it actually, the flow of the, the Nero 5 was hitting it a little bit too much on a certain couple branches mm -hmm. and it actually had some flesh die off and you see algae grow there. So I kind of had to adjust it as yeah. things grow. It's just part of, you know, as your tank develops. Yeah, just keeping an eye visually on, mm -hmm. you know, what changes you need to make. One of my favorite upgrades? We went to Radeon, <laughs> so nice. um, we had the Hydros on there and we changed it over to the XR15 Blues. And there's just a certain look that I love about the Radeons, mm -hmm. you know, a little, it's got more output and it's also going to pair with the Mobius app, which we kind of have most of our tanks on, so it's right. a little bit easier. Um, there's a, the AI app is great too, but yeah. so we upgraded that just because we're going to get more SPS in there, it's growing, and I think just the overall color scheme is really, really nice. And yeah. it was, our whole row was Radeons, and then we had that one. I was like, I kind of need all to yeah, match just transition screen. it over, especially if you're using all the eco ecotech like powerhead, and right. et cetera, like that. So makes sense to have pair it all onto one platform. And um, we we now have the rail kits with the XRs available yep. for the Peninsula model. So this is we're going to show you when we go over there. It's got the rail kit. Looks really really nice and sleek on there with the XR15. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I'll be running in acclimation mode for a couple weeks just to be on the safe side since we moved over to those. But, you know, I think everything's going to be super, super happy. There's something about the Radeons that just makes the fluorescence and corals just really pop. Right. I love the color. You know, they're yeah. really good. They are more expensive light. So, you yeah. know, that is something that's not going to fit for everyone. So it is just if it's within the budget, I mean, XRs are just great lights. Yep, for sure. So it's got some nice equipment upgrades. We didn't change anything in the sump because the skimmer's great. You know, reactor's great. We've got... Quantum skimmer, we've got the torque reactor on there. Um, don't need to make any adjustments to that. So right. we just kind of went with the flow and lighting on this one here. And then, um, so that's all doing good. Yeah. And I checked back and it's roughly 10 months ago that we added our first round of corals into the tank. Um, so between uh, 10 to eight months ago is when kind of all the first round of corals went in there. We haven't added anything since, it's all been growing in. We did move it once over into a new location when we changed over to the, the Marine X version of the peninsula. Mm -hmm. But we do have a, um, some comparison video shots. Oh, nice. showing it. And I, was, I saw this earlier today and I was like, I always wonder if my corals are growing because I see them every single day. But it's actually really- I'm not in here every single day, all day like you are. So when I walk in, I can tell you that when I look at that tank, I'm like, whoa. Right. What happened here? I was like, oh, things are probably <laughs> growing. And then I saw this video, I was like, oh yeah, I guess so. I don't pay attention <laughs> when it's day to day. So we're gonna go ahead and show you the updates on this ORA build. You can stop over it, Okay. Okay. So it's kind of this from when the first round of corals had been in for a little bit and settled till yesterday. Um, you can see it's just overall much more full. Yeah. The the Wow, yeah, that's right. a huge difference. Even you look at the toadstool, I remember that was very relatively mm -hmm. small. The zoanthids have grown like crazy. Yeah, of course, zoanthids are taking over their corresponding rocks the rapidly. Um, but yeah, so we'll start focusing on these. You see the Duncan in the zoos on the front here. Look at that. And where it's at now, the Duncan's got, I don't know, probably like 20, 30 heads on it. it had like five or seven, came in. It just now goes, this one here, cute little hammered, so adorable, one head, maybe kind of started to split into two. Look at that bad boy. Wow. I never noticed, I did not notice that. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at it almost every day, you don't see, you see like, you don't, it's like you really incremental. It. Yeah, 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 it is, because it doesn't happen overnight. And so here we go, one, another one of our zoanthid rocks. 
I mean, zoos do grow, grow quick, of course, yeah. and you can see wow. just completely filling in. That cyphastria has encrusted all the rock around it, and they'll mm -hmm. have a little battle of space going on on that spot. So you can see it, it's looking beautiful, and there's not a ton of room for corals. No, um, no. But, you know, there are some spots that we can put it in to kind of let it grow out, and we don't have a lot of fish in there. When we right. moved it, we ended up taking some of the original damsels out. A few fish has just kind of gone here and there. Um, so the stocking is pretty low, and I actually can't keep my nitrates up to save my life. <laughs> so um, this is going to be beneficial for the SBS and stuff, too, because it's almost a little bit too clean. Yeah. So I'm going to hopefully get, we're getting more fish in there, going to give more waste product and have the SBS grow a little, even faster. I'm going to add some more in there today, too. Nice. Yeah. So it's definitely filled in a lot it's looking so nice you would think, we haven't touched on this tank in a while right you would think you know that with an aquaculture tank you wouldn't really be able to create something that really looks all that great but yeah. those are all ora corals and it looks amazing it is no and designer corals in there at all none of the yeah. crazy expensive stuff and it looks awesome it does and just think of like this is that you know this is only a small portion of what they have Right. So, you know, you can stock a huge tank and do fully aquacultured. Um, and I just like the fact that, like, all of this is not from the ocean. All the fish, mm -hmm. you know, there's even shrimp and stuff in there that are aquacultured. So, um, you know, and it's turned out to be a very beautiful and kind of more naturalish looking, but with nice yeah. colors and stuff. So, yeah, I love it. Love it, love it. Um, I think we're going to go put some stuff in the tank. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to take you guys, we got we got some new fish today, and yep. we're going to do this live, right? Yep. There we go, they're over here waiting for us. Um, I acclimated them earlier when they arrived this morning. So we're going to have that fish in first, because they have already been acclimating over here in the bucket. We're going for some stuff for a nice kind of open water movement. Like I said, we don't have a lot of fish. We've got a school of cardinals, we've got the clown, we've got... Um, Orchid Blenny and someone else, will go be running around in here as well. So we're going to need some more open water stuff just to make some more waste and give more movement in here. And they're pretty mad. You can see they're in here. Doo, doo, doo. See whoever catches first because they're going to be mad. So we have, let's see if I can get some chalk basslets. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Just what's really cool about what I'm looking with the where you put the vortex is how the cord can run over the light bar yeah kind of grooves in stays out of the way all right so here are the chalk blasts these guys get a few inches long these are actually i think in some of the videos i said for some of my fish for they're great for reef tanks and i think they're extremely underrated and don't get enough attention because <clears throat> you can see they have a lot of iridescent like shimmery color like purple blue mm -hmm. red um you know, and they can go together in groups. They're actually probably happier in groups. And they get a couple inches long, so they have a really neat color to them. And they're going to be really mad right now. So I think this is one of those must-haves. I love these fish. All right. And again, if you guys move? want to uh, see the whole lineup of ORA fish or corals, I believe it's orafarm.com, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Cute. All right. Try to grab my, I have some striped blennies. <clears throat> These guys are cool because they are a nice open water swimming blenny. Very active. They are sort of participating. <laughs> sort of participating. Sort of. We're actually going to go with the, ah, right? <laughs> These are actually the Kimura blennies. They decided to go in the net first. Same thing. These guys are nice open water swimming. They'll kind of school and hang out together. Nice and peaceful. They're very pretty too. They are, and a lot of blennies are just perchers on the rock, but these ones, um, we have quite a few at ORA, are gonna be very active open swimming. They'll still have like a cubby in the rock that they'll go to and kind of hang out, but their main activity is actually open water swimming. You can so. see some of the other fish are like, wait. We're getting where, friends? Where did you come from? <laughs> Cause it's been the same fish in there for a long time. We haven't added anything. So these guys are like, hold on. But I'm also making sure to add a pretty good amount of fish at one time for the fact that if you have a really established set of fish and you just throw in one or two little ones in there, mm -hmm. very likely that they could get beat up. So here's our striped blennies. I like these a lot too. 
And again, all aquaculture. Yeah. All captive bred. Look at that nice bright stripes and yellow to them. And with more fish going in, the existing fish are like, oh, I'm not going to try and beat anybody up because there's a lot of new ones and they all kind of reestablish territories and, you know, all that. I mean, mm -hmm. a clownfish is probably still going to be a butthead, but. We just have, yeah. Just a single clownfish in just there? Just a single. Yeah. He didn't like his mate too much. All right, the next ones I'm grabbing here. Those are yellow line gobies. Maybe. There we go. So these are yellow line goby. Neat thing about these is they stay small and they're actually cleaners for your fish. So they will actually eat like scales and parasites off your fish, keeping them nice and healthy. Oh, there he goes. Totally gonna disappear probably. Um, so a lot of times whenever you have parasites or just to keep in an uh, aquarium. Oh, here's one over here. He's hanging on the glass. A lot of people will say get a cleaner wrasse or something, but those guys don't survive well in captivity. And they're pulled from the reefs, which they're very important for. So these guys actually will eat regular fish food, but they'll also clean your fish, parasites, scales. Um, they're sustainable, they're aquacultured, and they do well in captivity. Nice. So go with these guys, go with a group of these guys over a cleaner wrasse any day. What's really cool about this, this system too is you have all the aquacultured corals, um, a huge variety, but w you know this is a kind of a smaller tank, so it's really cool actually that you can put so many different smaller fish. Mm -hmm. um, it adds a lot of life, a lot of movement to the tank. Yeah, it's gonna be nice to have all this activity in here. And the last fish we have is a white spotted pygmy file fish. We had one of these in the original, um, but he didn't really make it after the move, so. This guy is, has no reports of eating coral, which is one of the only file fish that can be in a reef tank with no risk of picking at corals. Super cute, I love file fish, neat mm -hmm. personality, cool shape and stuff like that. Um, so he's gonna be nice and safe in here, not pick on the corals and just be like a fun, kind of unusual addition. Pretty cool looking. Yeah, they are. And he'll darken up a little bit once he settles in. Kind of got like some little spots and stuff on him. Don't mind all our mess in the back. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing with Peninsula. It's a working <laughs> studio, <laughs> man. It's a working studio. Behind the scenes. <laughs> all right. So those guys should all, probably later today, be nice out and, and you know moving around and in the open. And this tank should be a whole bunch more active. So again, I want to encourage you guys that are in here with us to, if you have questions about the corals, the fish, water box, uh, anything, post them below. We're giving away some swag at the end of the stream. The currency to win that is questions, smashing the like button, the share. Lid. Oh yeah, oh, there there's you go. a lid on the Cube 20 right there. So that's the brand new mesh lid for the Cube 20 that Keenan's showing right there. I love this tank. It's all, pretty much all leathers, sorry. I was just, I was just admiring thing. it actually because it's grown in so much. It, no, I they have it. gotten huge, but it's pretty much all leather. There's a couple of zoos and stuff in there, but for the most part, full leathers. Um, and it's so easy. It's just yeah. really, really. It's the ideal setup for a cube. Yeah. So it turned out really, really nice. Side point to this. Um, so we're going to put the corals in. I have a frag rack. I'm just going to put them on so I don't have to lay them on the sand until I decide kind of exactly where I want everything. Um, and they kind of adjust to the lighting and stuff as well. So I'm going to start opening these guys. Here we have the ORA Scorchin Torch Acropora. And this one was actually named by Donna. This is like nice. of her is, this a, is this a newer yeah, edition, it is, you think? Yep, yeah, it is one of their newer ones. This one has some really cool, like real delicate branching. Um, and then the tips on here and like the polyps get like nice like in yellow, nice. deep purple. But love the delicate branching of that. Here we go. I'm going to put them lower since we can kind of. So one of the things that uh, the viewers may not realize is when ORA releases a coral or a fish, it can take years yeah. sometimes for them to actually put them out in the market. 
because uh, I got to make sure it's something that can grow properly. There's so many things that go into it, but you might see a new coral pop up, and they didn't just like source it a few months ago. Sometimes no. it, it sits in their facility for years as they. You can tell because like they have huge colonies, and then they grow them, and they make a certain number of generations before mm -hmm. they even start releasing them. And you can tell by the size of the corals that you get from them, is they're not just glued to a frag plug and shipped yeah. out. You know, they're almost always going to be encrusting multiple almost full, branches. I mean, that's like a full colony right mm -hmm. there, basically. I mean, they're frags of frags of frags of frags. They're not just chopped up corals. Yeah. This one here is the Skyline Granulosa. Yeah, it definitely is not just chop and sell. A lot of care and time goes into developing these and making sure that they do well in captivity. I always like the Granulosas. That's a really neat... That's There we go. So even though these corals are all aquacultured, it's really good that this tank is much more mature and stable. Mm -hmm. It's a great time to start getting a little bit and more. It, and there's SPS. been ups and downs to it. You know, yeah. there's been a few corals that we have lost. Um, acros that have had branches. Mm -hmm. You know, RTN. Like if you look right here. On that front one here, with them kind of covering onto the rock, the light green one, that was a bigger colony, but it had mm -hmm. RTN. <clears throat> and I saved two tips from it, grew it onto rock, right. and it's starting to slowly kind of encrust and grow back. So there, it's never fail proof, even with right. aquaculture or whatever. But at the stability point that it's now, everything's growing really good. Mm -hmm. I've had no issues for a long time. <clears throat> oh, we have a, this is uh, their Marshall Island Wanderlust Stag. Hmm. I love the names. Right. <laughs> See what this one looks like. So staghorns have a nice, like, tall growth, kind of branchy. You know, see with this guy, very tall, long branches. All those little nodes will kind of create a very tall branched colony as it grows in. I like the stags. Yeah. Always been one of my favorite. And they'll be nice on the top because they're going to grow in nice and tall and fill in a lot of this area. So that'll be one that I actually put definitely put somewhere that can grow up into yeah. the water column quite a bit. Cute. Now, always remember, our corals are grown under sunlight. Yep. So they do color up a whole lot more under the lights once they get adjusted. Um, but they're grown under natural sunlight. No artificial lights are used. Yep. It's big greenhouses. Check out our video. You can see exactly the vats that they're in. Um, <clears throat> so I always find that they color up even more once they're in the tank and right, under the lighting. Right, using the different lighting, yeah. We have the Australian Delicate Staghorn. This one is super thin branch. You can see. So this is a stack one. Oh, like very small branches. I don't know if you can tell in the picture, <clears throat> video, but like all the little polyps, they're kind of tucked in, but you can see that bright yellow. Um, and these bases get more of like that nice deep purplish pink look to them. You've got your colored tips, but you can see all that bright yellow that's going to be popping out of there once the polyps open up. Careful anytime you have SBS. With thin branches, you may self-frag without choosing to. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They're easy to knock off. <laughs> right, we've got this is the Marshall Island as well, yellow fuzzy. So Marshall Island is our mariculture facility out in the Marshall Islands. Mm -hmm. These are actually grown out in the ocean. Another yellow fuzzy in here. So it's got, it'll have that nice like greenish yellow color. It has really big polyps where it gets its fuzzy name yep. from. So it's gonna look really hairy when all the polyps open up. I like big polyped uh, SPS. Me too. Like yeah, no, Milliaporas and yep. stuff like that that have these big moving polyps. I love those. So this is gonna be look really, really nice. See, most of the ones that are in here are kind of smaller polyp. And like you said, there's not a whole lot of real estate left in here, Jeff. There isn't. I got some places I sent a video of the tank to <clears throat> Jordan at ORA, so he knew kind of how much space I had and kind of where it would work out. So, yeah. um, you know, we're not getting a ton of corals in here, so because there just is not the room for it. And anything that's not encrusting, I can move around if I need to as well. Do you think anybody's wondering why this frag tank's so close to the peninsula? <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> Temporary home as we. Like, like she said, it's a working studio. Around. If you guys notice that frag tank's super close, that tank's going to be moved a little bit. 
Yeah, yeah. so th this tank over here is going to be moved. That's our four foot rag. Soon, so it's a lot of the close. sides getting shifted around, so it's yeah. kind of displaced as we get other models in and new build going on and stuff like that. So um, you'll see, like the Infinity and the LX are beautifully spaced, and then it just kind of becomes a mess on this side. But yeah, there's going to be something very special going here. There is. Right? There is. So make sure you subscribe. Actually, this is all scooting down. So yeah. that'll be a fun day. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have really Laura. a fun day. Oh, fun day. Move tanks. Yeah, Laura's yeah, yeah. purple pile of acro. <laughs> I'll have to do some like time lapse of this like shifting of all yeah. these tanks because they're all moving in not the same direction. So it's going to be interesting. All right. So this is our last one for the corals going in. You see that one has a really nice like teal and aqua. Um, tips and stems, and then the base will be a little bit darker, so you can see it's all squished in. I'll have to do some update pictures and videos and kind of drop them to show you how everything is settled in and where I end up putting everything. So we got six corals to go in, which is going to pretty much take up all the space that we have in here for the rock work so that things can still grow in. Um, and we added a total of 11, 12. 12 fish, so, and they're all small, which is good. And like I said, we had very little fish in here. And all of them seem to be hiding. So we're gonna be looking awful nice that tank once everything gets in place and the fish come out. Somebody, some, Brian spotted an unused tank in the back. I'm trying to see. There's a Peninsula Mini right there's there. There's a Peninsula but, Mini. But I'm wondering, is he looking there's further a, back? There's a tank in a crate further back into our area. Um, <laughs> that's where our six foot frag is. That one got upgraded to Radeons too. That's yeah. really good. This kind of is our holding tank. So um, yeah, there's a, there's a clear 30 back there too. There's a lot always going on here. <laughs> yeah. Things there's always a lot get of moved tanks. and there's set some, up. There's some really cool like builds that. coming in the future. Yep. Really cool giveaways. That's again, I, I always stress staying subscribed so that you can, s there's so many chances to win stuff, but also just a lot of a lot of education. Yeah, good to see. I mean, eventually we'll have something on every pretty much tank we have. We've got a huge database already um, yeah. on builds and information. So just you know, stay tuned because there's always a lot going on here for new stuff. Yeah, you see that. I think it's today says episode 132, but we've actually done I think closer to like 300 or more live streams. I think it was over 300, but then yeah. we restructured the numbering yeah. a bit. Um, to be like kind of more of the recent time forward, yeah. I think. So yeah, we have three hundred plus live, live shows streams, yeah. that we've done. So we're working real hard this year to get you guys some more recorded content, which Lots you will more. start seeing dropping soon, more consistently. So. Yeah, so I'll have something we're dropping at least once a week. Yeah, uh, we got some other builds and stuff in the work. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and stuff. say it, Keenan, too, about the other channel, right? Yeah, sure. Oh. Yeah. Um, we do, we decided to, and we'll f more formally give you guys information on this, but we do have a freshwater specific channel coming soon. So if you're a freshwater uh, hobbyist in here, or even if you do both, we have a freshwater dedicated yes. YouTube channel coming. So keep an eye out for that very soon. Yeah, because we're getting a lot more, into, we have a lot more freshwater videos and builds come in and it kind of all kind of gets mixed up and you know, we want to make sure that it's all easy to find yeah. and we can focus um, more on freshwater than we used to. We didn't used mm -hmm. to do too much with freshwater, but with the studio we've been able to. Yeah. And excited to put a lot more freshwater stuff out there because we have a lot of beautiful freshwater tanks and lines and stuff. Um, so we finally get to do some cool stuff with it. a ton of beautiful customer tanks out there that are just popping up every mm -hmm. uh, every day. So Yeah, so stay tuned. We'll have that, and we'll kind of be putting a lot more new stuff on that channel. So go yep. over and follow that. We'll, I'm sure we'll post it whenever yeah. it goes active. Yep. Um, so another quick side note is we do actually have some new um, Carib Sea Rock in. Yes. Yes. So I don't yep. know if you'll pull up the site for that. Um, but they have some new products. We brought them in because they're going to be great for scaping. We're working on some yeah. bundles mm -hmm. to kind of incorporate them. So these are active now on the website. Yeah, so there's a couple new products. What's a couple new arches? Yeah, so we are now carrying the um, shelf, which is 21 inches. Mm -hmm. It has an arch picture, but you know. Um, <laughs> we can change that. So 21 inch shelf. This is going to be great for the larger tanks. 
to mm -hmm. be able to give you some height and space to build off of. So I'm really excited about that one. 18-inch uh, arch is new. We also, um, not as new, but we have the 8-inch nano pack mm -hmm. of arches available. One of the really cool, Nano Rock Original. So these are smaller pieces of the original meant for more nanos. They're going to be only a couple inches across right. versus like seven or eight. Um, so it's going to work really good in smaller tanks. We're just adding some little pieces here there. The Nano Reef Kit has two little nano arches, the eight inch, and then um, sm some small original pieces. Yep, and that's perfect for what, like the cubes and cubes stuff? Cubes and like peninsulas, that, yeah. little mini ones. Um, because it's going to give you a lot more functionality to build around. The previous box had maybe a li little bit too much, the pieces were a little too large, a little sometimes too you had to break them. Yeah. So this is the perfect uh, kit for nanos. And then, you got fresh in the water very, rock on there too. Yeah, and then in the very new, near future on the saltwater rock, we're going to give you guys some new bundle options yeah. as well. Formulated some new ones that's going to give a lot more yeah. variety in the pack. So those will be coming up soon. Um, and we'll definitely tell you about those. And we also have freshwater rock, mm -hmm. dragonstone, and mountain stone, and substrates available too. Yep. Yep. So check those out. Um, yeah. Questions, I think. Yeah, we can get going. <laughs> Question. Sebastian's asking Would you say a copper band butterfly is a good tank mate with a Picasso triggerfish if I get the trigger as a baby and slowly introduce by dividing the tank in a, into a fowler? No. Um, no. <laughs> so Picasso triggers uh, tend to be pretty aggressive, and you don't know if you're going to get a nice one or an aggressive one, and they're spastic. Um, even the nice ones are just like boom, 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 boom. They're a little bit too crazy busy. The um, cover band butterfly is very sensitive, very slow, mm -hmm. very methodical, can take some time to get eating frozen food. And if you have a lot of like really aggressive feeders at feeding time, that cover band is going to go hide. Um, also, triggers are known for like nipping at copper bands, fins, and stuff like that. So, it is not a great choice. I think if you have to have butterflies in with like a trigger, look at some of your bigger ones, like raccoon butterflies that have a more round shape. They get bigger. They're a little bit more boisterous. Mm -hmm. um, even heniocus, but their top things probably going to get trimmed back and yeah. not grow long. So, triggers just aren't the nicest. Um, if you want something that's more peaceful, but in the trigger family, blue throats. Are a great choice. Cool. Jay Manzo, light recommendation for anemones. For most types of anemones, some are like super sensitive. It depends on your size of your tank, but any of the aqua illumination or um, Ecotech lights, radions, hydros, primes, depending on yeah. the size of your tank, are well suited for anemones. So really just any of AI It has Ecotech. to be suited for corals, because um, yeah. anemones do need to have high light requirements. Fish pony. Hey, I just noticed no more Stacy. <laughs> what happened to the black hair? It finally washed out. Um, yeah, Stacy. got fired. Stacy. Uh, you know, um, I couldn't take it anymore. I hated it. So uh, I did a color remover and went back to like a blondish. So it got a little bit red in it, but that's my natural. My so hair does naturally have some red in it. The story is Stacy. Was an Kinda, accident. Yeah, you didn't mean to go that dark. No. <laughs> Stacy no. was an accident. <laughs> yeah, no, she was a big accident. Um, it was hair color going wrong. It gave me like jet black hair. Yeah. And it did start to fade out some. So then it was kind of like, all right, I'm going to color remove and go back to medium blonde. But my natural red's coming through. So I don't know what it is, but it's, I like it. It's much it's better. It's funny that you guys still remember that stuff. It was like <laughs> before live stream one day, I was like, you're no longer Jess. I got renamed Stacy. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jess disappeared. So. Yeah, no, I'm not not going back to dark hair ever again. No, <laughs> it was a phase that I've completed in life. Lawnmower guy. Yeah. Lawnmower guy. All right. <laughs> Landscaping the, time. <laughs> the landlord doesn't realize that we're doing a live stream and they're blowing <laughs> the leaves outside our door. <clears throat> Brian says, I have a water box clear 16 paired with a Title 35 HOB, using it as a quarantine tank. Is that a decent setup for QTing tangs or fish that require more swimming room? No. Um, tanks even in quarantine because quarantine can last quite a few weeks. So it's got to be a decent sized tank. Um, 16, I mean, clear 16 is, is long, but it's just not enough for a tang. And I would try to go bigger, honestly. They yeah. just are very active. It's going to cause more stress. It's going to be harder for them to fight disease, harder for them to adjust. Um, you know, you really, I would ideally go with something bigger. Smaller fish are fine. Yeah. But I wouldn't put tangs in there unless they were like, 
the teeny Kitty tiny beating. ones. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Trina's asking, you can use a Radeon Pros as a freshwater light. What's a good setting if so? Yeah, I mean, they're fully controllable and adjustable for what yeah. spectrum you want. Um, you know, they're not intended for freshwater, but they do have freshwater Radeons. Yeah. But yeah. if you were like, I have a saltwater tank with Radeons, I want to switch to fresh, you could definitely make it work. Sure. You would just have to make your own um, You're probably not going to use some of the channels that are in there, you know, but yeah. it would still work just fine. And Trina, I don't know if you know, like she said, they do have freshwater Radeons built specifically for that. That's, but if yeah. you already have the pros, you can make it work for yeah, sure. Yeah, we do have the um, freshwater Radeons on our Clear 4820. Uh, you can look back on that one. It's doing wonderfully, and yeah. um, the radio looks really that good. At some point, we do. On the it new freshwater channel, we will. There you go. We'll do a, like a comparison thing yeah. on that one too, yeah. and do an update on that. Keenan, you got that? <laughs> Put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> Rashawn says, "What is the white and black clown?" Um, he's a black storm. Black storm. Yeah. Nice. Though. Yeah. That's Beautiful. a very popular one, right? Mm -hmm. Relatively expensive. I think that's what the name of it is. Hard to find. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. They're um, becoming a little bit easier with aquaculture, but you know, definitely one of the newer variety of clowns yeah. out there. Cajun Reefer, what's your feeding schedule like on that tank? Um, I usually once a day put in once, once or twice, but usually once a day I put in more than the fish can eat because I need more waste product. So um, we use Rod's food, so I usually put a variety of Rod's food in there one time a day. Probably should do twice, but you know, everyone gets fed at the same time. Yeah. So. Lots of questions coming in. We appreciate that, you guys. We're gonna try to get to them as many as as many as we can. They are the, questions are the currency to win. Trina's asking, I really want to run a reef tank, but I need to purchase a backup generator in the case the power runs out. I don't want to wipe the entire tank out if I lose power. We don't have to. Um, I don't know. It's a mixture of kind of where you're located and if you know, you're in an area where you lose power when it's really, really cold out or do you lose power when it's really warm out can kind of depend on how you can kind of keep it. How frequently, yeah, how frequently, how long does it right. usually last? Um, I mean, we live in Florida. If you're in a hurricane prone area of Florida, it's probably not a bad idea. But you can use battery operated air pumps. <clears throat> also, your um, the MP40s and 10s and stuff can get battery backups from Ecotech that'll run them mm -hmm. and keep water circulation in the tank, which is important. The main thing is temperature and keeping that because yeah. a generator, you can run the tank, um, and if you had a heater because it was cold, it could probably make up for some amount. But if you're in Florida and your tank goes out, a generator, unless you have like a wall AC unit that was also run on it, like kind of depends on what you need based upon where you're at. Never a bad idea, but they're expensive. Um, and then you require gas. And a lot of times when your power goes out, well, here in Florida, if we have a hurricane, you're yeah. not getting gas either. So. Right, right. <laughs> um, Got to be prepared for that here for sure. Yeah. How often, if any, do you all clean your return pump and skimmer pumps? Mm, I should more. But as a general rule, <laughs> every three to six months is pretty good. Yeah. I try, I mean, I'm probably closer to that every six months, but you know, every three to six is a good rule. Yeah, especially with this, well, really both of them, but with the skimmer, you'll be surprised sometimes how much more performance you get out of it yep. after you clean it. It does, and, and yeah. your power heads and stuff like that too. Your pump, like pretty much everything, the, yeah. the gunk around the impeller, no matter what you are running, does slow down. And it creates more wear on the pump over time because it's working harder to keep up. Mm -hmm. um, so you're gonna protect the longevity of your pump, but also keep your flow at where it should be for your equipment and tank. Bill says, what's a good goby for your sand bed? Um, if you have a big enough tank that's established, you've got like diamond, um, diamond and um, golden head sleeper gobies are great sand sifters. They will make a mess. And they do, it does need to be a bigger, like 50, 60 gallon, well established or larger. And they're going to just constantly sift all day long. I prefer diamond gobies because they stay closer to the sand bed. So they take a gulp of sand and they kind of drop it out their gills in the same spot. Whereas mm -hmm. it, like a little golden head, these guys are great. They're sleepers, they're adorable. They take it and then they go swimming and like, shh, and they it just the sprinkle place. it everywhere. <laughs> um, so I prefer diamonds if I'm going to use one. <laughs> Cool. Recognize. I like that. <laughs> Recognize. How do you treat bubble algae? <laughs> Not a lot of ways to treat it, but hmm? how do you treat bubble algae? Emerald crabs. Yeah. Yeah. It's really I about mean, it, right? It's really about it. 
You can manually remove them if you pop one, you're just sending the spores onto the tank. It's going to be very hard. And they're hard to get a hold of without popping them. Right. Because um, they always go into like little crevices of the rock. Get an emerald crab, usually a male, I think works better. Let him do his thing. And then you'll have it pretty cleared up. You can keep him in there if it's the right tank for him because he's going to keep track of it and other algae. Um, or take him out once he's done. Bubble algae usually hitchhikes in somehow, right? It does. And then if you have high nutrients, it's probably going to spread faster. Yeah, it's faster. one of those things that it, it's almost in any tank, it's going to show up at some point. And it's usually not, it's not like a hair algae and an aptasia where it's like overruns and becomes like major nuisance. But it's one of those things like if you see a couple, just take care of it while you can. I think it's more funny looking than it is like causing yeah. any issue. Dart Reefer 14, do you use UV for this peninsula? We do not. No UV. No UV. Filter socks and good filtration. Yep. Nice. Christopher, do you remove the frag plugs when gluing to the rocks? It depends. So for ORI and stuff, generally not because it's encrusted. Um, and you're going to then break the flesh of it and, you know, not have a solid base for it. It's going to really slow down its growth, too. Yeah. The coral, a lot of times, will spend a lot of time encrusting before it grows up and out. Mm -hmm. So you've taken away all that kind of base stability. So for those, just find a spot to put it. As it grows in, you're not really going to see the plug. If you get something like a soft coral or whatever that's not actually attached to anything else, you can pop it off the plug and then put it to the rock. Yeah. A lot of people, Jordan has said over at ORA that a lot of people curse them for their frag plugs. Yeah. Because they are extremely durable. It's very difficult to cut them or get the coral off, but there's a reason that they do it. And it's why they have such big colonies, too, because they're ripping flow through those tanks mm -hmm. pretty rapidly. Yeah. And those plugs are really the only thing that keep their coral stable, from what I understand. Yeah, they're really long. Um, and just the way that they're designed with their grout systems, it keeps them, because if you watch the video, is they take these huge and it just flushes water through them, like yeah. big waves. Um, if they had small little frag plugs or whatever, you know, they would just get flopped off the frag racks. There'd just also, be a pile of them at the end of the tank. And it's also <laughs> causing your coral to grow a better encrusted base and like, yeah. he, like stronger colony and branches. Now, can you cut those bases off with like the frag saw with the griffin? Have you tried I that? I have, but I want to say someone said that over there, so you can't, but I have before. Okay. Yeah. Maybe they don't want you to. They don't want you defacing their defacing plug. Defacing their plug. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to get an exact answer on that one, but um, I have before. Fish Pony, I've noticed you guys run your lights on a wider spectrum. Is that just preference, or do you guys really have a good filter on the camera? It's the filter. That yeah. Looking yeah, that's yeah. No, we run a pretty blue, you know, yeah, within very reason. Blue. Yeah. Uh, but. And on the camera, for us to show the corals at all without it just being a neon blue, um, we have to sh put a filter on that makes it look more white. Yeah, it's like an orange filter that blocks out the blue right. light. That's the only way. Otherwise, you would just see a bunch. The camera doesn't pick it up well at no, all. No, so it's like a fine line. If we show it regular, it's too blue. But to us and the eyes, it's like the best look. And then we've got to put the filter on so you can actually see what we're doing in the corals. Yeah. You'll notice in that shot that you can tell because like the walls look a bit orange. Yeah. Because you're actually seeing the orange <laughs> through the filter yeah. on the white walls. Jacob Medina, hi, hey Jess, do you guys have any grub, grubs gorg, oh, what, gorgonians or something? Oh, oh. grubs gorgonian from RA. Um, I'm pretty sure, I know there's one gorgonian towards the back of the tank. But I have to look and see if it's a grubs or if it's just a purple one. But there is one Gorgonian in there from all right. I'd have nice. to look back on stocking what it, which yeah. one it was. I don't but think it was a Grubs, hanging in the back. personally, but. No, it might just be the purple Gorg. I just want to say that uh, we keep getting the question, when's the lid for this tank or for this tank available? Sure. So we have some questions coming in about the mesh lids. We just released them for the cube and the mm -hmm. all-in-one. Um, we're hoping by I believe June or July, the lids for the remaining aquarium systems will be launching. Right. Um, we want them to be perfect. They weren't perfect. So uh, come June, July, we should have them for every model. Yeah. So yep. tweaking it so that it's a perfect, easy to assemble design. Yeah. Yeah. Hannah Crisp, any reason why zoos? Zoas wouldn't be growing. You said they usually grow quickly. Mine don't seem to be grow going anywhere since I got them in eight months ago. That happens sometimes. It does. Um, and I say this, but it doesn't really hold true in our system. It's usually like water a little bit dirty. 
But like, I've never on that tank been able to get the nitrates above like five. <laughs> that's when I'm doing good. I've shut skimmer down or whatever. It's just, it runs really efficiently and the stock has been low on the fish, which is why I really want to add a good group in there. But usually they like water a little bit dirty. Um, placement could just simply be it as far as they're not happy with the light or the flow. And, um, you know, feeding the tank. Coral foods, amino acids and stuff like that mm -hmm. will definitely help. So it really depends on where they are and kind of what your tank parameters are to start So could it be too much light or too little or... A mixture it could, of both. yeah, a mixture of both. It's yeah. you know, and just placement. If now every single zoo in your whole thing is not growing, doesn't matter where you put them. Um, I would look at a fish that's either annoying them, some kind of you know pest that's maybe keeping them from really being able to be happy and growing. Yeah, um, that kind of stuff. And Hannah, also, if you're not, which you might already be, our Facebook group's a good resource for that. You might check with some of our other uh, water box owners. Yep. Too. Last question. Last one. Zach, tank is infested with vermitid snails. I've learned to live with them. Anything I can do? Um, pick them <clears> out <throat> manually, but get a ras. Uh, six line rasses are great. Melanaris, little coarse rasses. Granted, they do have risk at picking at some of your snails, eating their eyeballs off, that kind of stuff. But <laughs> um, they will help with a lot of the pests. I just ones. got a visual of that. It's true. <laughs> they do. They go for the eyeballs because the little things stick out. <laughs> Um, but All sometimes, right. yeah, Good natural times. control has to work on other things too. But I think a six line is probably one of your safest ones. Um, less likely to go after stuff. And um, Melanoris, Melanoris and Chorus have kind of a 50-50 on like kind of picking at some of the snails <clears> and having <throat> water box amnesia. Those are the, like the, looks like little sticks coming off the rock. Is that what that is? Or are they? No, the little circle ones, but like uh, they can like irritate your corals and stuff like that. But you know, get like a small ras, and they will help naturally control, and then just pick them out as you can. Okay. All right. They're laughing Ready back the there. Oh yeah, we've got some shirts to give away. All righty, guys, we're gonna right. give away some water box swag. You guys ready? Right. Water box drum roll. <laughs> on Facebook and Sebastian on YouTube. Congratulations, you guys. Email. Winners at waterboxaquariums.com and they will get you hooked up. They'll verify your social security number and your address. Address and credit cards. That's <laughs> yeah. all we need. Yeah. Don't worry. You get a free shirt though. Um, <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not. Don't worry. Um, so email, I'll get that. And um, it was, I'm, I'm excited to see some new stuff into this tank. Mm -hmm. So good to visit it again because it's been a while since we've. Yeah. Working on that one. Yeah, that's a beautiful system. Sure. Yeah. And I encourage you all, if you're setting up a water box, give it a shot. Try to do a fully aquacultured tank if you can. Yeah, check out ORA, all that they have to offer. Um, really good stuff. And then next week, we're actually going to get back to the Infinia. So we took Ooh. a few weeks off of it with some products and the ORA, um, but it is time to start adding coral. Nice. Yeah, so it's doing really good. We've got the fish in there, inverts. So next week, we'll add some corals in there live, which is always fun to see. And see what kind of things I choose from the tank in the back to put in there. Excellent. So, yeah. we, again, we appreciate you all being here. We will see you next week. See ya. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Remember, you can visit us online at waterboxaquariums.com. We're live every Wednesday. Thanks for watching. See you next week. <laughs>